Hello and welcome to another Out of Spec Reviews video. We are starting our coverage with the 2021 Ford Bronco. This one's actually a first edition and it's a Sasquatch with the 37s. It's got all the stuff. And well, we're starting with the boring video, but arguably the most important because big off-roaders like this are not incredibly efficient. However, that's where they spend most of their time is cruising down the highway, not out on the trails. We're of course gonna take this out off-roading, compare it, do a whole bunch of things on dirt, snow, and ice, but we need to see what kind of fuel economy you can expect when you're heading to the trails or on your commute. So we are about to perform our 70 mile per hour highway MPG loop test. I'll explain the test, I'll explain the truck a little bit, then we'll hit the road. Now the Bronco has two different engine configurations, two different body styles and a whole bunch of roofs and then also different wheels and tires. So your MPG from the factory can range from about 17 to 21 on the highway. This is the least efficient Bronco you can have. It is a Sasquatch with the 2.7 liter uh, V6 Eco Boost engine. Fantastic engine, by the way, tons of torque. We are, will have a whole bunch of reviews on this and the engine, but what we want to see is its MPG. And what's interesting is this is rated at 17 MPG on the highway and 17 MPG in the city, both in the EPA cycle. So let's go ahead and head to Wellington. I'll explain the testing procedures and then we'll hit the road. And now it's time to start the test by filling it up with premium fuel. No 93 here in Colorado, 91 is the best we get, but man, does this thing just not look good with some snow on it. Uh, again, this is a cold weather MPG test, which means yes, of course, a little bit of this here and there will affect aerodynamics slightly, probably not enough to really notice in a test like this, but I uh, got the tires aired to manufacture suggested pressures cold. They probably will come up a little bit higher as we drive, as we typically see. The truck is a little dirty, looks good. Man, this is so neat. Look at the rock slider, it's got ice in them. Thing looks meaty. Uh, it's got almost 9,000 miles on the odometer, so it should be pretty broken in by now. It feels broken in, feels nice and loose. I drove this car when it was fresh and it definitely is a little bit better. We have our 30 second countdown going here. We're just going to fill it all the way to the brim. We will then compare the fuel results to our MPG results inside the car, of course, and then, um, yeah, we're gonna take a look at the efficiency of sort of the worst case scenario, the Sasquatch with the big tires and the four door. This in theory, I would think would be the least efficient Bronco you can buy. I'm excited to see how it does. You join me in the Bronco now, it's currently 25 degrees. We will have a little bit of a side wind during this test, which won't help us too much. The reason I run a loop style test is so that if we gain elevation one way, we lose it coming back. So we zero out our elevation by running the same bit of road there and back. It also helps with wind. If we have a tailwind one way, then we have a headwind on the way back. This is a north-south and east-west test, so we kind of even out all of the forces on the car from the outside wind. It's about as scientific as we can get within a one hour or so test. We've tested a ton of cars in here, and I'm really excited to see how this one does. In terms of setup, I'm going to put it in eco mode. This truck truck, car, what is it? You tell me. Um, SUV, I think it's more of a truck's body on frame. Uh, anyway, uh, goat modes, there is an eco mode. As soon as I get the car going, I'm going to put it in eco mode, reset the trip computer. The car is currently off. I'm going to have the auto start stop system on. Everything is up to temperature. I drove the car up here on the highway. Everything's at normal operating temp. Cabin's already warm. No heated seats are going to be used. Just typical uh, cabin temperature between 68 and 72 degrees and the lowest fan setting on the auto mode. There are three. Those are our procedures. So let's do it. So we are currently in accessory power. I'm going to put the truck into eco mode. You'll see that right there. The engine is still off. Let's zero out of some of these menus here. What I'm going to do is reset trip two. So I'm going to hold OK. We are completely reset. Start button right into drive. We waste no time. We don't want to have any skewed results. We always pull out of here and then we're going to jump on the highway. Once we're on the highway, we're gonna confirm that the 70 miles per hour indicated here will be 70 miles an hour accurate. Have to say this truck, by the way, just driving it around is super nice. Great sight lines. A lot of the benefits you get from having a good vehicle off-road, you get from it being good on-road. Um, the engine calibration, 2.7 liter V6 in this particular one, a little jumpy in normal mode. I haven't driven it in eco mode yet, so looking forward to this. I think it actually might be a smoother calibration. This thing has tons 
tons of low down grunt. Let's go out of here this way, gently coming up to speed. The idea here is we want to kind of keep it out of boost as much as possible. We're not trying to sway results. We just drive cars all the same for the most part. I'm also going to be looking forward to seeing how quiet this is on the highway. This one does have the hard top configuration, so I'm looking forward to seeing how that does. But um, we're going to turn left, and our goal is to hit 70 miles per hour by the time we reach the end of the on-ramp. So let's gently merge up to speed. We'll see if auto start stop kicks in here. Coming to a stop. Revs. Yep, to zero. Pretty nice. Also going to be looking forward to seeing how the startup feels on this. If it uses a traditional starter motor, if it's too rough on kickover. Let's see. Pretty nice and smooth, I have to say, for it not being a mild hybrid vehicle and using a pancake motor, that was one of the smoothest starts I've experienced. Kind of merging onto the highway with some speed here. Gentle throttle, we're gonna hit 70 at the end of the on-ramp. Once we're locked in at 70, I'm gonna use the adaptive cruise control system to hold us there. And then once we're kind of cruising along, we will, um, of course, take a look, make sure we're GPS accurate. Gonna need a little bit more throttle than I'm giving it now. We're at 60, come on, we got another 10 miles an hour to go. Eco mode, interesting, it's preferring revs over boost, that's the way to do it. We've seen that calibration in a ton of cars. 70, there we go, locked in. I really hate to be in this position next to the truck, I'm sure he doesn't wanna be in the left lane and I hate to pass on the right, but sometimes testing procedures call for sort of odd driving. Have to say with a truck next to us too, it's not incredibly loud in here. I'm sure the soft top would be louder, but overall impressed with, this is my first time having it on the highway, impressed with the ride comfort. This is a really bumpy section of road. Feels pretty nice, I have to say, for it being, again, a pretty hardcore off-roader, Sasquatch back. This thing's riding great. It's comfortable, quiet. We're running in two-wheel drive, of course. And let me confirm our GPS speed and I'll update you along the way. So I found that 71 miles per hour indicated in the car as a GPS accurate 70. That's not too big of a deal actually. Sometimes I find with sort of different trim levels of cars with different wheel and tire sizes that the calibration for the speedometer isn't always done. But I think here it's fairly accurate. Again, one mile an hour difference could be uh, you know, that's negligible. That's nothing. That's fine. So yeah, cruising along trucks track straight for this one being 8,470 miles. And it's, I'm, I know it's been off-roaded because I know the people that have driven this and they've driven it hard. And, um, yeah, man, it's a cruiser. This is so much better than I expected. I was just driving a Jeep Wrangler recently, and by far, this is a superior on-road vehicle to a Wrangler Rubicon. That one was a 4 by E, uh, but this just feels so much more substantial. I would not even hesitate to take a road trip in this, and in the Jeep, I'd be like, oh, not sure I want to listen to that wind noise. I'm getting nothing from the roof in this vehicle. That's so impressive. Um, yeah, I'll let you know when we reach our halfway point gonna crank up the tunes on the Bang & Olufsen sound system, but I'm impressed so far with the ride comfort. Of course, we'll have other videos on this channel and our out-of-spec overlanding channel pushing this to its limits in the snow, off-road, testing out more goat modes other than eco mode, but part of our testing always includes an efficiency run. Here we are merging over to exit seven. I'm just going to cancel our cruise control right here. We're gonna coast in as we always do. The thing that I like about this intersection is we have a very high likelihood of being able to just continue our journey to the left. It does not seem like this vehicle does any sailing, which makes sense because it's not a mild hybrid, so it's just sitting at 1,600 revs. Have to say, pretty interesting to see it turning 21, 2,200 revs at 70 miles an hour. It seems pretty high. It's a 10 uh, gear automatic transmission, so you would think they could just put a tall gear in. We're good to just go here, which is awesome. So just kind of carrying momentum through. And um, yeah, I have to say this is really a much better cruiser than I was expecting. The sound system is very good, especially for a vehicle that has removable doors. So call me impressed from this entire package. I'm really just absolutely loving it. And let's merge back up to speed here. That was about the most perfect interchange. Almost no wind. We're talking a couple miles an hour. It's cold, but the roads are dry and this is honestly about as good as it gets for an MPG run. I'm pretty impressed, at least for a cold weather one. I still have not come to the conclusion if cars are better in cold or warm weather for efficiency, but uh, I guess you have more air density in the cold, but you don't have to run air conditioning. So we're almost at 71 miles an hour. Let's click our resume function here. Boom, there we go. And 
heading back to Wellington, Colorado. Absolutely loving the Bronco. And by the way, everyone looks at this thing. The truckers are all excited about it. This thing's been on sale for, I want to say, nearly six months now. And people are still absolutely pumped about the Bronco, including me. And we are just exiting, coming off cruise control here. Looking pretty good. The numbers are looking stellar. Really impressed here, especially considering everything. We'll take a look at the actual numbers when we're done with the test, but that was a near perfect run. No traffic, really consistent, 70 miles an hour, great weather conditions, dry roads, a little chilly, but not much wind. Amazing. It's actually almost seven or eight degrees colder here in Colorado than it was up in Wyoming, if I'm remembering correctly. It's sunny up there, and down here we are preparing for some snow. These are definitely snow clouds up ahead. So let's go to the come and go fueling station. We'll top up with fuel and then um, calculate all the results out. And now it's time to finish fueling it up. Premium fuel. Oh, I am excited to see the results here. The Bronco was so unbelievably comfortable, way more than expected. Really impressed here with the uh, ride quality of the vehicle. So let's, um, let me show you around it really quick. Let's see, what's it gonna do here? We'll let it click and then we'll give it 30 seconds. Come on, ah, it's a lot of fuel going in. All right, we'll give it 30 seconds from here. You can see pretty good cargo room. Very practical vehicle, roof comes off, of course. Let's take a look at the back seats. I actually haven't even looked yet. Ooh, nice mounting brackets, good spacing. Oh, love that big screen up here. Good sound system, really impressed overall. Just another 10 more seconds and we'll see how it does. And here we go, time to go full on the handle. And that's our final fueling result, 2.939 gallons to do our 57 and a half mile loop. Let's calculate the numbers. So the final calculations, what you've been watching this video for, uh, love our method of testing where we compare the car versus the pump. Generally, it's fairly accurate, but at least in this case, they're totally agreeing with each other. The vehicle says we used 19.7 miles per gallon. We used, we got 19.7 MPG. The pump, 19.6. So somewhere in there, roughly 20 miles to the gallon with a Sasquatch package here in the Bronco. I am fairly impressed for sure. And uh, yeah, overall, just a, a really good result for this vehicle. And um, yeah, that, that's really not bad for the least efficient Bronco on the market to get 20 MPG on the highway. That's good. Mm -hmm.